In today's instant gratification, knee-jerk, reflex, reactionary, sensationalistic society, one phrase tends to get thrown out there far, far too often with far too things or people actually deserving of that classification, and that is the word great or greatness. However, there are certain individuals that most certainly live up to that phrase in every sense of the word those true greats, those legends, those icons, the best of the best. And when I think about professional wrestling and I think about true greats, true icons, true legends, one of those names that I think of, always have and always will, is the American Dream Dusty Rhodes, baby. The son of a plumber from Austin, Texas, who at eight years old became so sweet, woo, funky like a monkey. The American dream, Dusty Rhodes, who this week tragically passed away in, in a short order at the age of 69, and obviously the loss resonated all throughout the wrestling world, and understandably so. Here is one of the true greats, one of the true legends and icons of professional wrestling both on screen and behind the scenes. There is no question about that. One of the truly great performers of all time, one of the truly great minds of all time. And when you talk about pure impact on the professional wrestling business, and you talk about guys that belong on that Mount Rushmore, you, know, you can make a very strong argument that somebody like the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, belongs on that Mount Rushmore. There is no question about it. And obviously, once the news broke that the American Dream had passed away, you know, the social media world became a buzz, remembering the greatness of the man and the performer, talking about some of their favorite memories, what he had meant to them. But what I think was really interesting was as I sat there and saw these reactions start to come out in the next 24 to 48 hours, after he had passed, you saw just how much Dusty Rhodes meant to so many people. I mean, you truly did. I mean, this was a big-time story. I was watching ESPN, and it was running across the ticker on the bottom. You know, that, that's a sports channel, and they're running the passing of Dusty Rhodes on the bottom of the sports tracker. Think about that. You've got all types of people from all different walks of life, people that you would never think would have any freaking clue about professional wrestling or anything else, sharing their memories of watching the American Dream Dusty Rhodes as a kid and how much they loved them and how much they're going to miss them. And, you know, it kind of warmed the cockles of my heart a little bit to see just how much of an impact this man had on so many millions of people in this country and throughout this world of ours. It truly was. When I think of the American Dream Dusty Rhodes, I sit there and say, when I think of true greatness, this guy from Austin, Texas, with perhaps the reddest of rednecks, at a time where the business wanted a black hero, but did not want actually to have a black hero, Dusty Rhodes stood up and said, Baby, I'll be your black man. And he beyond question became the biggest black star in the history of professional wrestling. There is no question about that. He was that common man for all people. Not just for the white, but for the black and the brown and the blue and the green and the polka dot as well. You know, I, I tell you a quick story here about, you know, the America Dream Dusty Rhodes and his impact. I remember 2012. I'm getting ready for the... Uh, Trago Thez Hall of Fame weekend at the Dan Gable Museum in Waterloo, Iowa. So I stop at Brothers Barbershop, and yeah, that's the name of it. And I go, because i got to get trimmed up. i got to get clean for the event. You know, Road Warrior Animal is going to be there. JBL is going to be there. Jim Ross is going to be there. Several other legends as well. It's a Dan to be Severin's going to be there. You know, So it's a big weekend. It's a big event, and I'm looking forward to it. So I step into the barbershop. I sit down in the chair. And I'm talking with him, and I'm telling him what's going on this weekend. I'm telling him who's going to be there. And then all of a sudden, I just busted out 
for whatever reason, as I've been prone to do from time to time throughout my life, just randomly pop in, popping out some type of Dusty Rhodes impression. Because it always feels right. And it always makes me feel good. And I always know as soon as I do it, that baby, I'm going to put smiles on the faces of each and every one of you that is in the room with me at that time, if you will. And man, I busted out just a little bit of Dusty Rhodes, and I said, I only wish the Malcolm Dween was here, because if he was, he'd have something for Ric Flair all these years later. And by God, the barber shop went nuts. I went from being the only white guy in there and most everybody looking at me kind of funny to all of a sudden, I'm the center of attention. I'm the man. And everybody wants to regale me in their memories and in their stories when it comes to professional wrestling, but especially the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. Those people love that man. He was a hero to them. And many of them that hadn't watched wrestling in probably 15, 20, maybe even 25 years sat there for a long time and just kept talking to me about their memories of the American Dream Dusty Rhodes and talking about his matches, talking about his promos, talking about his personality, his charisma, how they would light up as a kid when he would come out, how they would sit there and try to imitate Dusty Rhodes when they'd be in the meal in the morning, baby, getting ready for school, if you will. And I thought to myself, man, that's an icon. That's a legend. When I can sit there and just bust out just a little bit of a dusty impression and the whole place fucking pops. That speaks to the legacy of Dusty Rhodes. Draw money when he ain't even fucking there. Just incredible stuff. But you think about it. You know, it wasn't the greatest athlete of the day. He most certainly didn't have the best look of the day. In many ways, he felt like the common man. He felt like the character that he was. And he had that great ability on screen to connect with the audience like few ever have had. He had the ability to draw you in, to suck you in, to fully and completely get you to suspend any disbelief you may have had and believe that he needed you on that path, on that quest, and on that journey. He was able to draw you in and make that issue personal. Not just personal for his character, but personal for you as well. When you talk about the truly great of greatness when it comes to baby faces in the history of professional wrestling, it's a very short list. And any short list that does not include Dusty Rhodes is wrong. Period. You're talking about a guy in Dusty Rhodes, now whether it be in the Florida Territory for Eddie Graham, whether it be for Jim C Crockett Promotions, baby, in that Mid Atlantic Territory. When Dusty Rhodes was down, when Dusty Rhodes was getting screwed over, when Dusty Rhodes was getting beaten, those people connected with him. Those people got behind him. Those people rioted for him. You go back to, if you remember, when the four horsemen sat there and trapped Dusty in the cage and they locked the door and they sat there and gave him the business and they broke his leg. I think it was in the Omni, if I'm not mistaken. You had the fans trying to break into the damn cage, climb the cage, shake the cage, trying to pull the cage up. That was how much the American Dream Dusty Rhodes could captivate the people. That's how he could be such an icon to so many, even to this day. Again, for people that haven't watched wrestling for 20, 25, 30 years, they'll probably talk about how much they loved Dusty Rhodes and how much of a hero he was to them. And again, when you're talking about on screen, I mean, I could just think back on his career in so many great rivalries, so many great feuds he had throughout the years with the Terry Funks of the world and the Ric Flairs of the world, the Tully Blanchers of the world. You know, as much as I've always done in these videos over the past almost five years now, I always seem to reference at some point in time, don't I? Dusty Rhodes coming after Tully Blanchard in that World Television Championship. There's a reason I do that. There's two reasons, actually. Number one, because that was a kick-ass rivalry, a kick-ass feud on so many different levels. Just one of many great ones, frankly, from Dusty Rhodes. But number two, I always appreciate that story so much because, to me, Dusty had that great ability to take 
whatever he was involved in and make it seem like it was the most important thing. Now it helps when you have the power to book yourself and Dusty always booked Dusty and God bless him for it. But Dusty could always book Dusty because Dusty always drew money and that's an indisputable fact. Dusty always drew. So Dusty had to book Dusty because he was that big of a star. But he wasn't always somebody that had to be in the world title scene. He was just booked in a big way like a star like him should have been booked. But, you know, he would sit there and take whatever issue he was on screen and make you think that it was the most important thing. Think that it was the thing that mattered the most. And he could take something like that world television title, and in particular his pursuit of that world television title, and make it feel like it was the most important thing in the world. Perhaps as important, if not more so important, than that NWA World Heavyweight Championship with all of its history and prestige and great lineage of champions that it had throughout its history. I mean, this man could take whatever he did and make it matter and make it mean something, make it personal, something that's really a lost art in professional wrestling today. But it wasn't just about, you know, his time in Florida, the Crockett Territory. You know, I think back to his time at the WWF. For God's sakes, they put the man in polka dots and he got them over. They put him with a former bus driver of theirs Calder Sapphire, and he got that over too. You took the America Dream Dusty Rose and tried to rib his ass, and instead he took that rib, he stuck it straight up Vince and everybody else's keister with the WWF, and he drew a lot of money off of it. To this day, people hear, American Dream, and they'll light up. And they'll think about polka dots, and they'll think about fun, they'll think about having a good time. He took something that had absolutely no business working whatsoever, perhaps one of the most ridiculous gimmicks and concepts of all time, and through the sheer greatness of him as a performer, the power of his personality, the power of his charisma, he got it over, and he got it over big. You know, and you think about Dusty Rhodes. I mean, you'll see so many people always, even in the aftermath of his passing, so many people tweeting out the Hard Times promo and how great of a promo that was. But how could you really choose, like, his greatest promo? He had so many of them. When you talk about the truly great talkers in the history of professional wrestling, Dusty Rhodes is clearly right at the top of the list. And it's because of so many different things. It's the power of his words, both in what he said and how he said it, when he said it, why he said it. It was also in the delivery in terms of how he was able to take that issue and make it personal. You could just tell he had that overpowering ability to just, again, grab you by the scrotatalia or the vagicilia and just suck you in and live vicariously through Dusty Rhodes. Live the American dream, if you will, Daddy. But it wasn't just about him on screen. That alone makes him one of the truly great performers of all time. You, know, you look at his legacy behind the scenes and off screen as well. I mean, let's, let's call it as we really see it. This is an inconvenient truth for Vince McMahon and his ego and his legacy in the WWE. But the simple fact of the matter is there might not be a WrestleMania without Dusty Rhodes. Because this Dusty Rhodes' concept of Starcade that Vince McMahon saw work, took, and tried to rip off and make his own, which he did with WrestleMania. Sometimes that was Vince's greatest strength was the ability to take what somebody else did, make it his own, and make it better in his own way. Well, without Dusty Rhodes and that concept of Starcade in 83, we might not have WrestleMania today. We might, but we might not. But we know Dusty Rhodes was first to it, no matter how much anybody tries to deny that, no matter how much anybody tries to tell you that's not true. It clearly is. When you look at the fact that Dusty Rhodes book some hot territories, whether it be Florida or whether it be that Crockett promotion, you know, sometime in WCW as well. Dusty knew what the hell Dusty was doing when it came to both booking himself and booking others. And there are so many people throughout the years that have benefited greatly from the booking of somebody like a Dusty Rhodes. And how could you not? One of the truly great creative minds in the history of the wrestling business.
Like I always think back, so many people talk about the Shockmaster and how horrible and terrible that was. And I always say, if anybody ever could have gotten that gimmick over, it would have been the American Dream Dusty Rhodes. I truly believe that still to this day. When you think about his impact as a creative mind and as a booker, to this day, you look at what happened at the end of Elimination Chamber. We talk about it and call it the Dusty Finish. It's a finish named after a man. It's named after Virgil Runnels, Dusty Rhodes. But if you really think about it technically, there are three Dusty Finishes. Three of them. Number one is where you have all types of interference and pandemonium reigns supreme. You've got RoboCop ripping off the freaking cage door and helping out Sting and all this other crap. And the baby face goes over and the people go home happy. Then you got Dusty Finish number two, which you saw at Elimination Chamber, where something crazy happens. The babyface wins, but he doesn't really win, and the heel still manages to slide out of there with the freaking title. And then you got Dusty Finish number three, where the babyface finally goes over after so long or so many obstacles, and everybody comes streaming out of the back into the ring to celebrate with them, and everybody has their kumbaya moment. He didn't have one finish, he had three. Just think about that for a second. But, you know, when you talk about greatness, you know, coming back to that phrase, again, I emphasize Dusty Rhodes is the epitome of greatness. When I think about impact on the business, I think he belongs in that conversation with somebody like a Vince McMahon because you look at all the impact that Dusty Rhodes had on screen, but also behind the scenes and off screen as a creative mind as well. You know, but when you talk about greatness, it's in some ways how you'll be remembered, what your legacy will be. And with Dusty Rhodes, there are so many ways to remember him that are good. There's so much of a legacy, both in what he did and what others have done. I mean, you look at Dusty Rhodes, one of the truly great baby faces in the history of professional wrestling, who could take whatever issue he was involved with and seem to find a way to be able to make it work one of the truly great creative minds in terms of booking in the history of professional wrestling, no question about it. But his legacy goes far beyond that. You look at his sons, you know, Gold Dust, Dustin Runnels. You know, this was a guy, a natural athlete. He looked the part. When you see somebody that looks like a professional wrestler, Gold Dust in many ways had that natural ability, similar to what you'll hear many people always say about somebody like a Barry Windham. You know, you look at Cody Rhodes. And you see that Rhodes lineage living on. And then you look at NXT, how many fans love what NXT is about and what it represents and what that product does. Well, who do you think has had as big of an influence on that as anybody up to and including Triple H? That's the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. He instru was instrumental for so long behind the scenes in terms of helping these young performers learn their craft, ply their craft, practice their craft, developing their characters, learning how to connect with the audience, how to connect with them via a promo, how to work in the ring. You know, for all the stuff you could say about Dusty Rhodes, one of the things you always forget about is how good of a worker he was in the ring. And when I say worker, it's the only worker that matters, and that is the worker that can actually work the audience. And there were few better ever especially as a babyface, that worked the crowd better than Dusty Rhodes, period. When you look at how much you as fans love NXT and you've enjoyed some of the people that have come up through NXT up to the main roster, each and every one of them have been able to sit under the uh, proverbial learning tree with Dusty Rhodes and obviously have come better off for it. So you're talking about somebody that had an incredible impact with his character and what he did for so many years. He had an impact in terms of his legacy, in terms of his offspring. Without Dusty, there is no gold dust. Without Dusty, there is no Cody Rhodes. And frankly, without Dusty, there's no NXT. And it's just that simple. This is a guy that had so much impact on so many people's careers. And when you think about it later on in life, the amount of people he was able to help you know, he was removed from the situation of trying to get himself over or take care of himself. He had one job to do, and he obviously did it incredibly well. And you could see, based off of the reactions of all of those that came up through NXT or are currently in NXT, just what type of legacy and impact and meaning Dusty Rhodes had on their careers. But, you know, there's one thing above all else that I think about when it comes to Dusty Rhodes. 
and to me is the true measure of his greatness, as silly as it may sound. Dusty Rhodes, for 30 years now, has had the ability to make me smile. There are a lot of times when it comes to professional wrestling, it evokes a whole host of emotions out of me. But rarely does it evoke a smile. There are those certain individuals that when I think about them, every time, I always smile. And that list is very, 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 very short. You've got guys like Hulk Hogan. You've got the Macho Man Randy Savage. You've got the Ultimate Warrior. A very, very short list from my mind. And again, keeping in mind the times of which I grew up in. The Road Warriors. And then, son of a bitch, it's the American Dream Dusty Rhodes. And perhaps more than anybody else, up to and including my favorite of all time, Hulk Hogan, nobody ever puts a bigger smile on my face more consistently when I talk about him, when I think about him, when I watch anything of his career than the Malcolm Dwayne Dusty Rhodes. There is no doubt about that. You know, that was his greatest gift to me, and I'm eternally get grateful for that gift as a wrestling fan, that for 30 years, every time I think about him, I see him, I watch him, I hear him speak, I got the biggest ass grin all over my face, and I know I'm not the only one. Legitimately a hero to so many millions, white and black alike. Think about it again. This was a guy that in many ways, like so many people like to refer to Bill Clinton as the first black president of the United States, well, the first truly great black megastar in the history of professional wrestling, if we are using that context, would have to be the American dream Dusty Rose. To this day, there are millions of black men and women and white black, white men and women, excuse me, all over this country and Hispanic ones too and Asian ones too that worship in some ways the America Dream Dusty Rhodes, that love that man, that admire that man, and respect the hell out of that man. And I respect the hell out of Dusty Rhodes and everything that he did. And it's a, it's a sad loss for professional wrestling. You know, death is a part of life, and it's unfortunate. And when it comes to professional wrestling, unfortunately, sometimes it's something that we've come all too accustomed to dealing with. But I'm not going to allow that to taint the way that I think about Dusty Rhodes because at the end of the day, when I think about him, you can see it now, I'll always have a smile on my face. If you're a younger fan and you want to see what so many like me refer to as that golden age of wrestling of the 1980s, go Google yourself some Dusty Rhodes stuff. Go YouTube some Dusty Rhodes promos. Go YouTube some Dusty Rhodes matches and segments. I promise you, you won't regret it. You understand what true greatness is. You want to see what true greatness can be from a creative mind. Go watch Starcade 83. Go watch so many of these other great shows over the years that have the dusty finishes involved. But again, it's that smile. You know, he was a guy that to me for so many years, he was who he was and he had so much fun doing it. How could you not have fun watching him? And I always had fun watching Dusty Rhodes. And I figure my last thing, my last parting shot here, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do it. What the hell? You know, for so long as I've done these videos, a lot of you have always enjoyed my Dusty Rhodes impressions. And, you know, I enjoy doing them, as you can tell. That's why I consistently do them. I'm not the best at it, but I have a passion for it. <laughs> and I, th I think I'm passable. So let's give this a shot. In honor of what I think is in many ways perhaps his greatest rivalry or his greatest story of all time, you know, if Dusty Rhodes could cut a promo for heaven from heaven, this might be something what it would sound like. Live and living color, baby, the American dream, Dusty Rhodes, standing here at the pearly gate. And Jesus himself says, Welcome, baby, if you will. And I need to know one thing, Dream. And I said, yes, Jesus, what's that? And he says, are you ever going to get your hands on Tony Blanchard and that world television title? Well, let me tell you something, Brother Jesus. The American Dream, Dusty Rose, is many things. He is the cold-blooded sausage maker. He is 
the personification of the American dream, if you will. And he is the founder of getting down for some good time boogie fever. He is the man that brought bunkhouse magic to professional wrestling daddy. But most importantly of all, most importantly of all, Dusty Rhodes is the man of the hour, the tower of power, too sweet to be sour, funky like a monkey, if you will, daddy. And all I know is this, is that Holy Blanchard, all these years later, you still have your hands on my world's television championship. And baby, you best believe that name the time, name the place, I'm going to smack you across that face, you big disgrace. You're going to come into my place, and I'm going to take that World Television Championship. And I'm going to tell you this much, Daddy. You better keep that zero baby doll away, because if you do, I'm going to smack her lips straight across her face when they come back around, and she's still going to look ugly. Woo! Funky like a monkey, Daddy. And that's what we do, because that's the American dream, baby. Dusty Rose is, once again, going to be the world's television champion. And I don't care, Tully Blanchard, if you sit there and you get the Andersons only and on. I don't care if you bring Gene out of the cobwebs. I don't care if you bring in that no good dog, Rick Flair. Nobody can stop me because I've got the people behind me. The people love the American dream. They live for the American dream. And I love the people, baby. And I live the dream for me and for them. And you know that each and every single one of them, when we have that match, when you come to them pearly gates, and you face the fact that the cold-blooded sausage maker is going to bring hard times on Tully Blanchard in his spirit, if you will, you will have no choice but to understand that you're dealing with the dealer, with the same man that has wild and died with kings and queens. And slept in alleys and dined on pork and beans. It's going to take what you value most. And that's your world television championship. Woo! That's funky. And now that, brother Jesus, is the American dream. Love you. Love you! And Dusty Rhodes, <laughs> you always have a special place in my heart. As a wrestling fan, I love you and I'll miss you. And I only hope you're dropping bionic elbows all over the place. I can only imagine that the guy snapping Slim Jims and the guy with face paint tassels on his biceps are looking at you and be like, hey, he's a pretty good guy. But a great man and one of the truly great legends in the history of professional wrestling. Gone, but most certainly never forgotten, the American Dream Dusty Rose.